Hi everyone, in today's video, we'll be looking at how to inject items into a listing grid using dynamic shortcodes while also respecting the focus order. Here's an example of what we'll be looking at in this video. Here we have a listing of my events and within that listing, we have some adverts that pop up. The first one pops up at the third item and then after every five items, so you see one, two, three, four, the fifth item, we get an ad. One, two, three, four, the fifth item, we get another advert. And all of this is done dynamically and also works with WP Grid Builder. So you see, if I do this, the advert doesn't affect the listing because the advert is just an ad that is injected into the listing. And the good thing about this method is that it is following the focus order. So let me show you what I mean. So if I come over here and you see when I get into the loop, one, a tab, and when I tab, it follows the focus order. So it is within the listing, but it is not affected by the query. Another interesting thing is that the positioning and the repetition is all dynamic. So I can say I want it to start from the second item and repeat every six items. Let me save this. Then we'll come back to the listing, refresh. And now it starts at the second item. And when you count one, two, three, four, oh no, let me make it the all. So second item, one, two, three, four, five. On the sixth item, we get the repetition. Another interesting thing is that the adverts are dynamic as well. So they are pulling in from a CPT, which is for my adverts. And then they are just looping through that ads and getting me the items one after the other. Although in this video, I'm not going to be showing you that because it's still a work in progress, but I'll be showing you a simpler version. First, I will show you the method that a lot of people talk about in the BRICS community. Then I'll show you why I am not so happy with that method before we go ahead and see how to use this method using the dynamic shortcodes. So now let's jump back in. So here we are on the back end. I've already gone ahead and I've created the section and the loop grid. I assume you already know how to do that. So basically we have the list and list item. The list is the wrapper and then the list item, they're using the UL li tag. The list item is where we have the query and it's just a simple query. I'm querying for all of my events. The events were created using Jet Engine. So we have this event and we're trying to get our advert. In this case, I'm just going to be using a static one item. I want that advert to be within the listing. So what some people recommend is because we have to fulfill one thing, which is that the advert should be part of the listing. So it should be within the LI. So they will come to the advert and then you just drag it below the actual listing. So it now becomes part of the LI, which is the nice thing about Bricks, that Bricks allows you to have your semantic HTML however you want. So we've made this to be a URL, which is the event list. Then the event items are LIs. So we now add the ads item just after that listing as an ally as well. So that was some people recommend. And then they say use CSS grid to rearrange it. So say we want it to be the fourth item here. So they come to this container, which is for the ads item. And we use CSS grid because I used grid already on the parent container. So if I go ahead to the class and then to the style tab, see in the CSS, I used CSS grid, so it is a grid container. So all you just do is now come to this item and we use, I'm going to do it on the ID level so I don't break the styling. So on the container, I'll say I want it to be, let's say I want it here. So that'll be the second row and the second column. So second column, second row, and we have it in the center. So that's the way most people recommend. 
But now let's see what is the drawback to this way. And it all has to do with this. The weaker guideline that says the focus order, it should be in a logical manner. So don't skip items. The focus should be logical in a sequence. Either you're having a horizontal sequence or a vertical sequence, but it should be in order. So let's go back and see what we have. So I'll save it. And we'll go ahead and preview it on the front end. Close this. And we get our listing. Okay, good. But now when I press the tab key, watch what happens. So I'm tabbing through. And my focus went from this item to the other item, skipping this. And this is a focusable element. So that can make some people get disoriented. They start to feel, are they doing something wrong? So they'll keep checking. So if you see, we tab, we have to now tab through all of these items before we now jump back into the top again to find the item we're looking for. So that is already breaking the focus order. Usually we want it to be all sequential. So that is the problem with this method. And that is the one reason why I don't recommend it. But I don't know. Let me know your thoughts in the comments so that we know what you think. But I asked this question in the WP accessibility community, which I highly recommend that you go ahead and you join so that we can learn about accessibility together. So in order to avoid this limitation, that's when I came up with an idea using dynamic shortcodes. And we have to write the query and everything in dynamic shortcodes. So now let's go ahead and see how I created it. So essentially, what we'll be doing is we'll be creating the entire query in dynamic shortcodes. Then we can have one of two options. To display it, we can either use a bricks template to display it, or we write the entire code ourselves. So what I'm going to be doing is I will take the design I already have, I save it as a template. Then I just have to remember the ID of the template and I'll use that within the dynamic shortcode. So let's jump back in. So here we are in the power shortcodes area of the dynamic shortcodes. We are working with the power shortcode because we're trying to use the WP query and that can only be initiated by the administrator. So we'll go ahead and I'll create new. Then I'll give it a name. Let's say in this case, event loop. Next, the way we start it is by, let me go ahead and increase it. We just have to create a query because we're trying to get a query of our events. So I'll say query within curly braces. Then I'll say posts at post underscore type equal to, to get the key, you can just hover over your CPT. At the bottom of your screen within the link area, you see it is called events with an S. So I'll say events. Because it's just one word, we don't need to put quotation marks. But if it is more than a word, then we put it in quotation marks to identify that it is a string. Next, let's go ahead and set the number of posts we want to return. So I'll say posts per page equal to, let me just give it a finite number like 12. But if you want to list everything out, you just do minus one. Then I think that is the basic thing we need for the query. The next thing we need to do now is get the values from this query because what this query is just returning is an array of our post IDs that meets this criteria. So what do we have to do with that ID? We want to now get out the loop item from this ID. So for that, we use a loop, say loop column. So we're looping through the post IDs and we're going to now define how the output will look like in a template. So I put square braces, then I'll close the loop with the curly brace. Within the square braces is where we add our templates. We can add a template either statically, which is what I'll do first. And that is just writing the entire thing here. So I can say something like li 
slash li and I want it to just return the post title and I want that in a URL so before the loop I want to start a URL create this loop and then end it with a slash URL so this is just a simple query let's see if it works so I'll save changes then I just need to copy this name Control C then let me create a new page I'll just use command UI and then just go to create a page and let me just call it event loop test page I'll publish it publish it then I can just press like edit with bricks or I can use the command UI as well okay so now we are in the bricks page let me drop in a section then I'll drop in a short code widget or you can use any widget you like but I'll just use a short code widget this is because I'm using a short code widget that's why I'm using this DSH but if you're not using a short code widget you just drop in your power short code the way it is slash dsh the main reason i'm using this short code widget is because i've noticed it allows us to preview within the builder so i don't have to go to the front end to see the preview i can see it right in the builder so that's why i'm using as you can see it's just listing all of our events and it's giving us just 12 items are returning if i save it and preview on the front end you see it's the same thing 12 items so this is all fine and good but if you don't want to write the entire loop yourself for the card that's where this comes in easily and i'll just go ahead and copy the template id so let's go to the templates and these are the three templates i created this is the event card this is the static event listing item and this was the dynamic one so all we need to do now is just copy this whole thing so this is the short code so i'll just copy this it's copied then i'll go back to my power short code so in this case let me just use the command ui and go to power open a new tab and go to that tab go to the end so we are in the event loop and all I need to do now is replace this post title with that short code. And just copy this, delete it. The way we work with short codes within the dynamic short codes is we use curly brace again, do WP dash short code column, and then we paste the name of the short code without the square braces, just the name. Remove the square braces. I can also remove the quotes. And the other thing is, any of these parameters like ID equals to 1101, you replace that with an at. So you say at key value pair. So you use the name of the short code at then any key value pair that is there. So like ID equals to 1101. This is the same way your breaks, elemental short codes, all of them have this same pattern. They have the name so something like elemental underscore template or bricks underscore template then they have the id equal to a value so you just have to replace that as at id equal to that value for elemental make sure you're using the section template that's the one that works best so we have this now let's go ahead and see if it works so I'll save changes then i'll come back to this and refresh and you can see it worked so we have our listing item this is the whole card let me go ahead and show you the card itself so it's under the templates let me edit the template edit with bricks so the only difference is that rather than using the bricks dynamic tags you have to just replace all of those tags with 
the dynamic short code tags. So what do I mean? Bricks you use post underscore title, you have to replace it with dynamic short codes version, which is post column title. Bricks uses the feature underscore image, you have to replace it with the dynamic short codes version, which in this case is media's URL at ID equal to post featured image ID and so on and so forth. This is returning the media ID for your featured image. And then I'm just saying I want to return the URL from that media. I believe Bricks also allows you to just use the ID. So you may delete the entire media column URL at ID equal to and just leave the post featured image ID. I believe that should also work with Bricks. But I just wanted to be specific and see with Jet Engine, I replaced it with the Jet Engine version, which is just Jet column start underscore date. With Bricks, it will be JE underscore start underscore date. With dynamic short codes, is Jet column start underscore date. So this is similar. Unfortunately, it will not show up in the builder, but it will show up on the front end. So that's why we have it here on the front end. Then we can go ahead and style it however you want, like the grid, because right now I didn't style the grid. That's why it is coming up full like this. So let me go ahead and style the grid. To speed up the process, I've already gone ahead and I've added the class name of event-list. And in the li, I put event-list-item. And I just had to put the style again because with the bricks, if the class name is not being used within the builder and you put it as global class, because I used it as a global class here, but if that is not being used directly in the builder, Bricks would not load that CSS on the front end. So that's why I just decided to save myself the trouble. I've added the style directly into the loop. You could also add it on your shortcode or rather than using a shortcode, you could get rid of the URL here and the URL and just put the loop as an item within a block. That will also work. So that's it. So now if you go back, save it and check the, it is now styled properly. So the last thing we'll be doing is injecting our static item into the loop grid. So now let's go ahead and see one trick we can use to inject our item. So I'll just be injecting a single item in a future video. Hopefully uh, when I've perfected the code, I'll show you how to do that repetition and use a query loop as well to repeat through your adverts. So let's jump back in. The method we'll be using is applying an if condition. So we'll define a loop index and say, if the loop index is equal to a certain value, then output our static item. Otherwise, just output the regular event loop item. So now let's see how it works. So first I have to initialize the loop index. So I'll say set index to be one. Then within the template, so we have our loop, we have what we're looping through and we have our templates. So within these templates, we we'll now create our if condition. So I'll open the curly brace, say if column, then just before the end of the square brace, I will close the curly brace. So we now have this if statement. So we have to now define what the condition is. So I'll say if the index is equal to, so equal to the index is, let me give a value of like, let's say four, then output one value. So this is the value you should output. Let me put a square brace. Otherwise, I'll put this regular value. So let me put that in a square brace as well. And indent it so everybody can see it easily. So the way it is doing now is we are looping through our items. But before that, we have initialized an index value of one. Then we created our loop. The loop is looping through our query of posts for the event post type, then within that loop, 
we're saying that if this value here, which is the equal to index, no, let me make sure that is, this is supposed to be the item indented. Okay, now we have it. So as if the index is equal to four output, one template, otherwise output a second template. For now, let me just copy this twice because the value of the other template, let me now go ahead and see what that value of this template is. So I'll use a quick way, which is the command UI. So I'll just say control K, and then I want to go to my templates. So that's the bricks templates. Let me press control enter. So it opens on the new tab and then control three. So I'm in that tab and I'm looking for the ads card template and uh, that one has a value of 1108 so come back to my powershot code and i just want this value which is the 1108 in this case right now is the same value 1101 so i'll change that to 1108 so what i'm saying is if the index gets to 4 output this value but rather than just only outputting the static value, I wanted to output both the static value and whatever post was supposed to be shown. Because if I do it this way right now, what will happen is when it gets to the fourth item, it will swap out the fourth loop item and then just replace it with the static item. So that fourth item will be lost. So say we have an event listing and we have like four events. What will happen is that that fourth event, rather than pushing it to the fifth event, it just swap it out and put a static value, which is not an ideal solution. So what we'll do right now is we'll output our static value, but still go ahead to output the other template, which is more dynamic. So I'll copy the second li and then paste it just after the static value. So it will output the static value, then it will still output the dynamic loop item for the events only when the index gets to four. So let me indent this. The only trouble left now is that we've set up an index to say the condition is if the index is equal to four, but that condition will never be met because we're not incrementing the index. So we have to find a way to increment the index. How we do that is within the loop, just after the if condition, so somewhere here, we now have to increment that index. I'll use the set value, so set index, and we now create our increment. So we use the plus, so that's plus column. We're incrementing the index by one. So I'm saying set the index to be equal to a new value, which is the old index plus one. So to now go through this loop, let me indent it so you can all see. So how it will happen is to go through this loop. It will do an if condition. If the value is less than four, it will output the second condition, which is like false. But if it's true, output the first condition, then it will increment by one and go back to the if condition and keep checking to keep incrementing until the actual loop has gotten to the end. So this is all we have to do. So I'll save it. And let's see if everything we did works. So come back to this page and refresh. And let's see. So our fourth item is our advert. If we want to change it, we we'll come back and say the fourth item, instead of four, we can say we want it to be the seventh item. Save, come back, refresh, and let's count one, two, three four, five, six, then the next item is the seven to one, and that gets our static value. And we can tab through all of them. So tab, 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 and then tab. We get it within the focus order, which is what we want in this case. So yeah, that is just a simple walkthrough of how 
I was able to accomplish it. We were using different short codes, and in the future, I will try to break down each of those short codes in more simpler terms. So, for our posts, our terms, our ACF, Metabox, and all of those short codes, I will try to break them into simpler chunks so that you can go through a course and see how everything works together. So, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave a thumbs up so that I know you enjoyed the video. And if you have any questions about Dynamic Shortcodes, leave them in the comments or join the Facebook group of the Dynamic Shortcodes plugin and we'll try to answer your questions over there. Thanks for watching. Bye.